Today, our topic is expectancy theory of motivation. What is expectancy? Expectancy may be taken as the expectation or it is the hope that something will happen in future. Theory says that motivation emerges among people when there is some hope or expectation. How do you people are motivated to study well? You people believe that a certain hard work will help you to score more marks in the examination and it will help you to get a desired job and a better lifestyle in future. If there is no such expectation or hope, you will never be motivated to do hard work in studies. Now you study well because you have some expectations. You believe that hard work will lead you towards expected result. When human beings have some hope or expectations, they are motivated to work more. And when they lose their expectations and hope, they will be demotivated and fall into depression and into other problems. Human beings must believe in better future. They should believe that they can achieve their targets through certain performances. When your expectations are strong, you will be better motivated. The expectancy theory says that the intensity of expectation has a strong impact on the intensity of motivation. If expectation is strong and high, motivation will also be high. The expectancy theory of motivation makes an attempt to explain why people behave the way they do. Or the theory tries to understand how people are motivated to do something. The theory states that persons behave the way they do because they expect certain result out of that behavior. Why do you prepare timetable and study well? Because you expect good marks by doing so. Why do you smile at your friends and behave in a lovely style? Because you expect a similar behavior from your friends. It means that human beings behave in a particular way or they engage into certain actions as they expect certain preferred result out of that action or behavior. People behave in a particular way as they believe that such a behavior can produce an expected outcome. If your parents do not give permission to go for an excursion with your friends, how good do you behave? You have your own methods to express your displeasure. Perhaps you may not take food or may not interact happily with uh, your parents etc. Why do you behave so? Because you expect that such a behavior may change the mind of parents and they may permit you for that trip. Expectancy theory also states this. Theory says that people opt for a particular behavior when they expect certain outcome because of it. One more thing is to be noted here, when human beings select such behavior, they are highly rational and select only those behavior which they can enjoy. That means, the people decide to behave in a particular way only if that behavior is acceptable to them. I don't think that you will decide to avoid food in response to the decision of your parents if you are very hungry at that time. If you are very hungry or if you are a person who likes food very much, you may find another method to express your ill feelings and displeasure. Only acceptable and enjoyable behavior is selected by the person and the person must believe that such behavior can produce expected outcome. According to expectancy theory, 
the behavior we choose will always be the one that maximizes our pleasure and minimizes our pain. Okay, we can move on to the theory. Expectancy theory was proposed by Victor Harold Groom in the year 1964. It was in the book titled Work and Motivation. Victor Groom was a business professor at Yale School of Management at New Haven in United States of America. This theory, this expectancy theory says that it Individuals have choices and they may make decisions based on which choice they perceive will lead to the best personal outcome. Their choice is based on their perception. If they perceive that a certain choice will lead to the best personal outcome, of course they will opt that choice. Rome's expectancy theory of motivation tries to explain why individuals choose to follow certain courses of actions and prefer certain outcomes over others. He studied business decisions and concluded that employees do things only when they perceive that such effort would lead to their expected result. Therefore, management should make decisions considering the expectations of the employees. Every person in the organization has some expectations about the future. Such employees will be motivated to perform well as long as they believe that uh, those performances will lead to the attainment of their expectations. When employees believe that if they do hard work, management would notice it and they would reward accordingly, then they will be ready to work hard. When employees believe that management is not capable of recognizing the hard work of employees, they will never be motivated to work more. The performance or employees should believe that a certain performance will be followed by an expected outcome definitely. This is how employees are motivated to work more. According to expectancy theory, motivational force is the outcome of three important elements in human beings. Three important elements in human beings. Namely, expectancy, instrumentality and valence. Expectancy, instrumentality and valence. Theory states that motivational force is the function of expectancy, instrumentality and valence. What is expectancy? What is instrumentality? And what is valence? We can see. We can see an example. You are supposed to attend an employment test in the next month. You know very well that if you work hard, you can make good performance in the test. And the good performance in the test will surely help you to get that job. Thus, you start your preparations. Here, what is the motivation behind your hard work? What is the motivation behind your preparations? It is the belief that you can perform well in the test only if you work hard. And only better performance in the test can help you to attain the job. In other words, in order to get to the job, you should perform well in the employment test. And in order to perform well in the test, you should work hard. This is how you are motivated to prepare well for the test. Two level processes are very clear here. In the first level, you study well and work hard to perform well in the test. And in the second stage, you believe that your better performance will ensure the job. These two stage processes are seen in your studies also. You very well know that in order to get to the desired profession, you must acquire the degree. And in order to acquire the degree, you should study well. 
This is how you are motivated to study. Two expectations or two uh, beliefs are there. As per the expectancy theory, the first level expectation is termed as expectancy. And the second level is termed as instrumentality. What is expectancy here? Expectancy is the first level expectation that the hard work or effort will lead to better performance. Expectancy is the effort performance relation. As per the example, you work hard as you have the expectancy that your effort will help you to perform well in the examination. Expectancy is the expectation that better effort will lead to better performance. Rule describes expectancy as an action outcome association. Action outcome association. And it takes values ranging from 0 to 1. 0 means no expectancy. And 1 means full expectancy. Here, effort leads to performance. Under expectancy, effort leads to performance. Okay, this is expectancy. The next level is instrumentality. What is instrumentality? Instrumentality is the second level expectation that if you perform well in the employment test, you will get the job. Instrumentality is the belief that a good performance will lead to expected result, expected reward. Here, performance leads to reward. Performance leads to result. Performance reward relationship is seen in instrumentality. Under expectancy, we could see effort to performance relationship. Here, under instrumentality, we can see performance reward relationship. Rule describes this reward as the outcome. Outcome. This reward is the outcome. According to Rule, instrumentality also ranges from 0 to 1, where 0 means no expectation and uh, 1 means full expectation about the desired outcome. When we look at the example, you believe that if you perform well in the test, you will get the job. Job is the reward here. Here you know that better performance is required to get the job. This knowledge or belief is instrumentality. Thus, expectancy motivated you to take good effort for the test. And because of the instrumentality, you believed that if you perform well, you will get the job. Thus, motivation requires both expectancy and instrumentality. We can think in the reverse order also. Because of the instrumentality, you believed that uh, your better performance in the test will help you to get the job. And because of the expectancy, you believed that you can perform well in the test if you work hard. Okay. Thus, motivation requires both the expectancy and instrumentality. However, Victor Broome says that in addition to expectancy and instrumentality, one more thing is needed for motivation. That means both expectancy and instrumentality are not enough to motivate a person. One more thing is needed. We can see what is it. As we could see in the example, we studied well to perform well in the examination because we have expectancy. And we performed well in the uh, examination because we have the instrumentality that if uh, the performance is good, of course, we will get that job. Thus, we have both expectancy and instrumentality. There is one question. Do you really want to get that job? You prefer to be a teacher, but this test is for an accountant. You don't like accounting job. If you dislike the job of an accountant, how can we say that you are really motivated to study well and perform well in the test? In order to ensure real efforts and performance, 
the person must have the real desire for the outcome he should desire for the result this desire for the outcome is termed as valence without the valence the motivation cannot be real here the theory says that in order to get a real motivation you should have an irresistible passion to get to the job if you are not interested in the reward motivation will never be effective motivation takes place only when you value the result or the reward very much or when you have an intense desire to get to the job of course there will be motivation this interest or the intense desire is termed as valence in the theory valence is the value of the result in the mind of the person it is the degree of importance given to the result by the person according to room valence has a value ranging from minus 1 to plus 1 which means valence may be negative or positive when the worker wants to attain the reward the value becomes positive and when he wants to avoid the outcome value becomes negative if you want to get to the job valence become 1 and if you don't want to get to the job valence becomes negative if you want to fail in the exam valence becomes negative if you want to avoid something the valence will be negative if employees perceive that the reward is not valuable valence becomes zero or negative for him so far we could see that motivation takes place because of three elements called expectancy instrumentality and valence motivation is the outcome of these three factors in the theory group uses the term motivational force to be not motivation according to expectancy theory motivational force is the product of expectancy instrumentality and valence it can be presented as a formula motivational force is equal to expectancy into instrumentality into valence if any of these factors is zero the result will be zero because we multiply all these three to get the motivation that means all factors are important in creating motivation all elements should have positive values to get a positive motivation as earlier mentioned both expectancy and instrumentality have values ranging from 0 to 1 and valence may have the value ranging from minus 1 to plus 1 if the value of valence becomes minus or negative the motivation becomes negative thus expectancy theory explains how negative motivation is created we could see three types of relationships here effort performance relationship is the first one here the person believes that certain effort will lead to expected level of performance we term it as expectancy second relationship was the performance reward relationship here the person believes that a certain performance will help him to attain expected result this is termed as instrumentality next is reward desire relationship here the person has high desire to get the reward it is valence when we think about the practical applications of the theory it is sure that in order to motivate employees managers should be able to develop expectancy instrumentality and valence among employees how does this possible for the purpose manager should know more about these elements the first element expectancy expectancy is about effort performance relationship expectancy is about effort performance relationship here the employee believes that his efforts will lead to certain performances how does this belief is generated this belief is generated out of three factors 
these are self efficacy goal difficulty and control self efficacy is one's own belief in himself if the person believes in himself that he can perform well if he works hard this is self confidence in one's own abilities if you believe that if you work hard you can perform well in the examination that is self efficacy that is because of self efficacy if you don't believe in your own skills and abilities you cannot trust on your own ability to study if you are not confident in yourself you cannot believe that you can study well and perform well that means the managers should concentrate on developing self confidence self efficacy among employees next factor is also important it is goal difficulty goal difficulty explains how difficult is the goal to attain difficulty increases when goals are set too high or performance expectations are too difficult too difficult goals will reduce the confidence and thus maximum expectancy cannot be ensured if goals and targets are attainable and challenging it may boost up the level of expectancy the third factor is control the employees must believe that they have some degree of control over the expected outcome the students should believe that he can score uh, at least two marks more if he studies for 10 more minutes if the students thinks that he will get only this much mark even if he studies well or not what does it mean here the student has no control over the result he thinks that the result will be same even if he works hard or not expectancy works better only when the person believes that he can change or control the performance through his effort similar to expectancy manager should also ensure instrumentality instrumentality also has some factors to be looked into factors associated with the individual's instrumentality are trust and policies then there is lack of trust in leadership instrumentality may not to work properly because the employees cannot believe that their better performances can bring in better rewards employees must have trust in superior that the superior will reward them if they perform well and the factor is policy policy also affects instrumentality if the decisions are taken on the basis of likes and dislikes of manager without looking into any policy employees cannot expect performance based rewards in such a situation the employees cannot expect that they will get a promotion and rewards if they perform well and thus there will be no instrumentality if the policy of the organization is to reward and promote those employees who perform well the employees can expect a reward for their performances then instrumentality arises formalized written policies impact the individual's instrumentality perceptions next is valence valence is the value the individual places on the rewards factors associated with the individual's valence for outcomes are values needs goals preferences and of course the source of motivation values kept by individuals have a direct impact on valence based on values some employees expect personal rewards and some employees expect overall growth and development of the organization these kinds of values increases valence needs are another factor perhaps you may have urgent need for a job because you want regular income to support your family the source of motivation is another factor if your motivators are feeling stars your valence may be to become a feeling star the sources of motivation have impact on valence as a manager it is important to recognize that individuals have different sets of goals and expectations and therefore must be motivated according to their personal preferences and choices 
The key to apply this theory in workplaces, therefore, is to gain a true understanding of individual's expectations. The theory elaborates that in order to motivate the employee, there is a need to build expectation in him. The employees should believe that the management monitors the performances and will definitely reward those who perform well. Here, duty of manager is to design better positions to promote efficient employees. There should be sufficient higher levels to place the efficient and hardworking people. Thus, basically, the person should aim at the rewards. Personal expectations and feelings are the basis of motivation here. That means only optimistic persons can be motivated properly because they can expect better outcomes out of their efforts. It is to be noted that the reward should never be available to all but should be offered to only those who work hard and make effective performances. The reward system must be fair and just in organizations. Every increased effort must be measured and should be considered for reward. The employee's motivation level should be continuously assessed through various techniques such as questionnaire, personal interviews, etc. This theory stresses upon the expectations and perception. What is real and actually is immaterial? Expectancy theory is well known as it is effective and practical. However, this is criticized by many as it seems to be too idealistic. Such criticizers argue that only a few individuals perceive high degree of correlation between performance and rewards. How can you say that all people are working hard with a view to get a reward? Another argument is that the application of this theory is very limited in practical situations. In many organizations, promotions and better remuneration packages are related to other parameters such as position, experience, responsibility, education, etc. Reward is not directly correlated with the performance. However, these criticisms do not degrade the relevance of expectancy theory. The theory is still relevant and it puts forward some important aspects of human behavior and methods to ignite their motivation and hard work. Many managers and organizations find it very useful and apply these techniques in practice. Okay, hope that you got some ideas about the expectancy theory of motivation. We can meet in the next class with another topic.